Hello and welcome to our webinar, Graphic Novels for All. I'm Annie Bostrom, Adult Books Associate Editor at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today, today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, roll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Last but not least, Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned above. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Jennifer Chan, Marketing Director at Fantagraphics Books, Ashley Kronsberg, Marketing Manager at Diamond Book Distributors, Chloe Ramos, Book Market and Library Sales Manager at Image Comics, Mark DeVera, Sales and Marketing Director at Yen Press, Morgana Santilli, Sales and Marketing Coordinator at Yen Press, and Margot Wood, Director of Sales and Marketing at Oni Press. First, we'll hear from Jennifer Chan. Jennifer began her career working in bookstores after graduating from Boston University in 1997. Following her passion as a consummate leader, reader and a lover of art, comics and graphic design, she moved into the publishing world in 2001 and has been working in trade sales and marketing for over 15 years. Jennifer is currently the Director of Marketing at Fantagraphics Books. Thanks for being here today, Jennifer. Thanks so much, Annie. Hey, everybody. Thanks very much for listening. Today, I'll be presenting a sneak preview of highlights from our summer 2022 list. Up first is a new collection of the internationally acclaimed newspaper comic strip, Macanudo. In the spirit of Calvin and Hobbes and Mutz, Argentine cartoonist Liniers uses a shifting cast of, ca uh, cast of children, talking animals, imaginary monsters, and anthropomorphized objects to muse on nature and engage in surreal artistic flights of fancy. With delicate penwork and understated watercolors, the comic skips lightly from style to style and subject to subject, as Liniers allows his imagination and observational humor to roam free. There are jokes about domestic life, imagined scenarios of historical figures, and the puncturing of pop culture stalwarts. Macanudo is a boundless canvas for its author's humane and delightfully off-kilter view of the world. Welcome to Macanudo is the first of a three volume series collecting the Liniere's groundbreaking strip. Carl Barks delivers another superb collection of outrageous hijinks, preposterous puzzlements, and all around comics brilliance in our best-selling Carl Barks Disney Library. This volume features the debut of Magicka Dispel, Scrooge's mysterious and mystical nemesis. Uh, next slide, please. Also of note, several of the stories involve Scrooge's fabled number one dime, which was the basis for the actual coin inserted into the complete life and times of Scrooge McDuck deluxe edition box set. There's also a nice helping of Gyro Gearloose and his crazy inventions that somehow always seem to create more problems than they solve. Carl Barks continues to be our number one top selling Disney author. We've seen an increase in sales over the past year and a half. It's rare for books this far into an ongoing series to maintain such great numbers. Each volume features over 180 pages of story and art, each meticulously restored and newly colored, and insightful story notes by an international panel of Barks experts. Up next is Golden Boy, Beethoven's Youth. This book has been chosen as a Junior Library Guild selection. 
Ludwig van Beethoven created music that moves and inspire, inspires us to this day. But are you born a genius? This graphic biography asks who is Beethoven before he became Beethoven? Master cartoonist Michael Ross tells the story of Beethoven from 1778 to his first major public appearance in Vienna in 1795. It begins when the family is living a difficult life in Bonn. Father Johann battles with alcoholism and is deep in debt. Only young Ludwig and his talent at the piano offer any hope for the future. If only he would stop composing his own pieces and just play what's, ex what's expected of him. Author Ross was asked to do a small comic for the Beethoven Society. Through this opportunity, he discovered the diaries of the baker's son that lived downstairs from Beethoven's family, the content of which inspired Golden Boy. As in his previous book, The Thud, Ross skillfully mixes humor with empathy and pure social drama, crafting a coming of age story that transcends its biographical subject matter. His colorful expressive style and mastery of the language of comics are perfectly suited to the tall task of capturing Beethoven's timeless music visually. Print ARCs are available for this title upon request. Another book that has been chosen as a Junior Library Guild selection is Treasure of the Black Swan. This thrilling graphic novel based on real events chronicles the intense legal and political battles sparked by the discovery of a priceless shipwreck. When an American treasure hunting company uncovers a shipwreck containing the greatest underwater trove ever found, the world is captivated by their discovery. But over in Spain, a group of government officials surmises that the sunken ship is in fact an ancient Spanish vessel. Thus begins a legal and political thriller pitting a group of idealistic diplomats against a rich and powerfully connected treasure hunter in which vital cultural artifacts and hundreds of millions of dollars hang in the balance. Cartoonists Paco Roca and writer Guillermo Corral bring a cinematic flair to this graphic novel, combining threads of Tintin-inspired seafaring adventure, political intrigue, tense courtroom, intense courtroom drama a gripping dramatization of a little known, unbelievable true story of money, political power and cultural heritage. The Treasure of the Black Swan was also adapted into an original television miniseries called La Fortuna starring Stanley Tucci, which has just debuted in the US on AMC Plus this month. Up next, we have Ultrasound. In this graphic novel, Glenn and Cindy become unwitting test subjects in a mind control experiment after a strange sexual encounter. Driving home from a wedding late one night during a heavy storm, Glenn blows out his tires. He knocks on the door of the only house he sees and is greeted by an uncomfortably friendly middle-aged man, Arthur, and his attractive younger wife, Cindy. The strange couple pours him a drink and then more drinks followed by odd con conversations and an unexpected offer that Glenn can't refuse. Where ultrasound zigs and sags from there is into a dizzying plot involving mind control, government secrets, gaslighting, and political intrigue that is always one step ahead of the reader. Stick Schulte's brilliant use of color and mastery of comic storytelling yields a breathtaking puzzle box of a sci-fi thriller. Ultrasound has also been adapted into a, a feature film starring Vincent Carthasian from Mad Men. The film earned raves at, the la at last year's Tribeca Film Fest and is scheduled for theatrical release in March 2022 and will premiere streaming on Hulu in June. In late July, we have Allison, another new original graphic novel from UK artist and illustrator Lizzie Stewart, which is a follow up to her debut from last year, It's Not What You Thought It Would Be. Allison tells the story of a young British woman who in her 20s seizes upon the opportunity to escape from her quiet life in Dorset to the thrumming art scene of late 1970s London. But the vehicle for her escape is a charismatic older man whose reputation as an artist and philanderer casts a shadow which will follow Allison for years as she pursues her painting career. Combining immaculate prose and stunning artwork, Allison is a complex love and coming of age story, as well as a meditation on female friendship and empowerment. 
class and patriarchy, the creative process, and the thorny world of fine art. Stuart crafts a graphic novel that evokes the atmospheric milieu of Bohemian London, while at the same time exploring the more universal struggles of women who must navigate male-dominated spaces. Told through quietly powerful interpersonal moments, rich with meaning and mood, this graphic novel will appeal to fans of Sally Rooney and Leanne Shapton, as well as the great empathetic writers, Alice Munro and Tessa Hadley. Social justice, woke culture, social media and gender dynamics intersect in this pandemic inspired graphic novel about the repercussions of making mistakes. This book is the winner of Slate's 2021 Cartoonist Studio Prize for Best Webcomic. It's July 2020 in Seattle. Gussie struggles to keep his dog biscuit boutique afloat while a global pandemic rages unchecked. The loneliness of lockdown and social distancing drives his employee Rosie to betray her principles. Rosie's roommate Hissy is at a personal crossroads. A love triangle emerges as they find themselves tangled in a web of pol police brutality, protests, drugs, dating apps, and COVID chaos. Taking place over the course of just a few days, this is a snapshot of humanity. Okay, animals in crisis. Alex Graham's pandemic-inspired graphic novel was initially serialized six panels at a time on Instagram during the lockdowns of 2020 and became one of the most talked about comics of the year. This hardcover edition will remain a timeless work long after the pandemic ends. Print ARCs are available for this title upon request. Following Simon Hanselman's 2021 smash hit graphic novel, Crisis Zone, which captured the zeitgeist of life under COVID, things settle down and Meg the Witch and Werewolf Jones get the band back together. Meg and Werewolf Jones are horse mania. Horse mania is a test of the audience's patience, proudly the worst band in town, existing within and operating far below the status quo of ambition. Join the musicians as they battle through shoddy, distracted practice sessions, a squalid house show, and a doomed interstate tour. Watch as they drunkenly flail through their sets amidst toothaches, nervous breakdowns, suicide attempts, mounting hatred, and a galaxy of benzos. This is music and performance in its most primal, multifaceted, and pure form. Horse Mania wants you to lose your mind. Below Ambition is a meditation on youth, performance and memory as only the best comedic writer in comics is capable. In late July, we have the Poe Clan volume two, the second and concluding volume of this best-selling manga, which is published here in English for the first time. This groundbreaking young adult, adult vampire, uh, sorry, <laughs> this groundbreaking young adult vampire series was created by Moto Hagio, a pioneer of the shoujo manga genres and one of the most influential cartoonists. Teenage vampires are a perennial and popular subgenre, and Hagio is one of the first to introduce it to Japan. Other highly influential works from this era, like The Rose of Versailles, are also becoming available in the US to readers and scholars for the first time. New installments of the Poe Clan series are still being released in Japan. It's been adapted into audio dramas, a theater production, and a TV show. Fantagraphics publishes the most beautiful editions of this work in the world in terms of production and design. Hagio herself has approved of and, and participated in our editions. Poe Clan Volume 1 came out in August 2019, and we sold out of our, our entire print run within six months of release. We will be reprinting Volume 1 in time for the release of Volume 2, so you'll have both volumes together. And the last two books are um, two nonfiction titles for adult and YA readers. Every day from March 2020 to January 2022, the political cartoonist and illustrator Steve Brodner would review the day's reportage, sit down at his drawing board, and memorialize a singular person or event that played a role in shaping that day. Living and Dying in America includes many lovingly drawn portraits of those who died in the pandemic and of those who displayed extraordinary strength, decency, courage, and endurance. But Brodner does not ignore those who per 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 
perpetuated the pandemic in word or deed. He also etches an acid caricature, those public servants and private entrepreneurs who preyed upon the public, spread lies, and aided the viruses spread through their ignorance, incompetence, and malfeasance. Released via social media, the drawings range from quick, expertly realized sketches to elaborate paintings to carefully rendered mixed media. Each spontaneously drawn or painted image is accompanied by a brief biography of those who died or a short summary of the person's conduct or the event depicted. Taken as a whole, living and dying in America is a chronicle of those who died and those who honorably served the living, as well as an indictment of those institutions and political figures who betrayed the public trust. It is a searing and essential moral document written and drawn by one of the great forces of American cartooning. In late August, we have Invisible Wounds, interviews with American vets. Cartoonist Jess Raffelson spent five years traveling across the country, interviewing veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, from kitchen tables in Georgia and libraries in New York, to dive bars in Mississippi and back porches in Vermont. What she finds is that the real experience of soldiers at war is a far cry from depictions in popular media like Zero's Dark Thirty or American Sniper. In these illustrated interviews, Ruffelson shares the stories of men, women, and non-binary ex-soldiers who struggled to reconcile their wartime experiences with their post-war lives. Identity lies at the heart of these stories as they grapple with their gender, their race, and the brutality they've witnessed and caused. In this compassionate and probing book, Raffelson reveals how America's endless entanglement in wars have affected the psyches of the people who wage them. That's it for me. Thanks again for all who registered and for tuning in. All the titles in my presentation are available on Edelweiss where you can view sample images and download digital galleys. Please feel free to contact me if you want to join our catalog mail list or with any review copy requests or questions you may have. I also send out newsletters for both our adult and our children's titles. So please get in touch if you'd like to sign up and be sure to check us out and follow us in, on social media as well. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We'll now hear from Ashley Kronsberg. Ashley is the marketing manager for Diamond Book Distributors and the editor of Diamond Bookshelf Magazine. When she isn't standing on the rooftop screaming her heart out about the latest graphic novels and manga, she can be found crying over the latest slice of life anime she was not emotionally prepared for, pocket healing in the dungeons of Azeroth, or hunting skags on the outskirts of Pandora. Take it away, Ashley. Thank you. As mentioned, I'm Ashley Kronsberg, the marketing manager for Diamond Book Distributors, and I'm excited to share our upcoming spring and summer titles with you today. As you can see on the next slide, we are also the sponsor behind Diamond Bookshelf, the educator and librarian resource for graphic novels. Um, if you aren't already, please follow us on social media and you'll receive an email after the show asking you to join our mailing list. Uh, if you follow us today, be sure to tag us on social media showing that you attended the show for a special treat. That said, we will get things started with the next slide. Kicking us off, we have Dynamite's partnership with Curiosity Books comes an indigenous tale that both blends modern and traditional storytelling. Written and illustrated by Native American voices, Thunderous follows Ayana as she struggles between her interest in social media and her spiritual path. On the next slide, you can see some gorgeous interiors showcasing a clean and playful style. This book is coming out in April and it is for readers eight to 12. Next up, we have the Legion of Forgettable Supervillain Society, also coming from Dynamite Entertainment. After young Ben Mondo hangs up his superhero cape, he finds himself near a bank heist alongside other reject superheroes. Ben catches the escaping robber's bag of loot and goes viral as a supervillain when a reporter captures a blurry picture of him. Uh, this title will be coming out in May and it is for readers eight to 12. On the next slide, we have Young Men in Love. This title is a non-erotic gay romance anthology focusing on portraying healthy romantic relationships between men for young adult and teen readers. We are really excited about the stories collected in this beautiful book. And if you are interested in reading a digital review copy, please send me an email after the show. This title will be released in June from A Wave Blue World and it is for readers 16 and up. On the next slide, 
uh, we switched genre gears to a tale that brings together the themes of Animal Farm and Watership Down. Animal Castle from a Blaze is a compelling story about social structure and exploitation of the working class told from the perspective of an animal hierarchy. On the next slide, you can preview how the artist Felix Delep uses uniquely dark colors to create the ominous backdrop for this timely tale. Animal Cas Castle will be released in August and it is for readers 16 and up. Next, we have Ladybird coming this May from Fair Square Comics. Inspired heavily by manga, this brilliantly illustrated story plays on the themes of time travel, greed, the patriarchy, and female empowerment with a contemporary and supernatural lens. The next slide portrays the clean, vibrant art featured in this coming of age story. Lady Bird is led by two female protagonists and is for readers 12 and up. This next slide is from one of our new publishers who has hit the ground running by dominating the bestsellers list of 2021. Coming from Graphic Mundi in June is Jacob's Apartment, tackling the question of what comes after a loss of faith. You can see on this slide how the art of it takes a semi-autobiographical tale and addresses the issues of death, spirituality, and purpose in a heartfelt way. Jacob's Apartment is for readers 16 and up. On the next slide, we have The Last Session coming from Mad Cave's young adult imprint, Maverick, this July. This book is uniquely executed through its dual storytelling from the perspective of the main cast in reality and in their fantasy tabletop role-playing game. On this next slide, you can see the whimsical and gorgeous interiors, as well as get a, as well as get a glimpse of the dual storytelling concept between telling the story at the table and their fantasy world in their RPG. The Last Session is for readers 12 and up. And finally, our last title for this presentation is Arsene Lupin, Gentleman Thief. Coming from Magnetic Press, this title is the literary basis for the Netflix Lupin series and the inspiration for the popular anime Lupin III. On the next slide, you can see an interior page showcasing the gorgeous art of this tale. This book will collect the first nine novellas of Arsene Lupin, as well as extra illustrations and spreads. Arsene Lupin, Gentleman Thief will be released in April, and it is for readers 13 and up. Thank you again to Booklist for hosting, and thank you to everyone attending today. Please don't forget to follow us on social media for a special graphic novel treat, and to email me with any questions about the books you saw today. Thank you so much, Ashley. Next up is Chloe Ramos. Chloe is the book market and library sales manager at Image Comics, where she provides resources to librarians and educators looking to utilize comics in their institutions, not only as items to be acquired, but also as keys to facilitate increased patron engagement. Before joining the IMAGE team, she worked at San Francisco Public Library for seven years. And prior to SFPL, she worked in both corporate and academic libraries, including a very meaningful stint at the Diego Rivera Archives at the CCSF Rosenberg Library. In addition to her work, Chloe is very passionate about being a Puerto Rican feminist art nerd. Thanks for joining us, Chloe. The floor is yours. Thanks everybody. Hi everyone and thanks for your time. Today I will be sharing highlights from our upcoming spring lineup. Uh, next slide please. And one more please. Our first title uh, is A Thing Called Truth from Yolanda Zanfardino and Elisa Romboli. This kinetic, chaotic, high energy LGBTQ plus adventure has thrills, chills, and two unlikely partners finding love on the open road. Next. Our protagonists couldn't be more different. One is a serious workaholic scientist and the other is an adrenaline junkie who fears nothing but herself. But the two of them will need to find a way to work together if they're going to complete their mission. Next. So get in, loser, we're getting romantic. This title is rated T for readers 13 and up and is perfect for fans of Crowded and Snot Girl. Uh, next. Our second title is Aerosmith from the legendary Kurt Busiek, working alongside Carlos Pacheco, Jesus Merino, and Alex Sinclair. This is a fantasy adventure of epic proportions where our story follows a young man learning the true cost of conflict in an alternate history universe where World War I was fought not just with bullets and bombs, but with dragons and spells as well. Next. 
This new edition is an oversized, completely remastered volume, perfect for new readers and old fans alike. The collection also coincides with brand new content, Aerosmith Behind Enemy Lines, out now in single issue format. The title is rated T plus for ages 16 and up and is perfect for fans of Astro City and Die. Uh, next. And next. Our third title is Primordial from the creative powerhouse duo of Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. The space race began on roads paved by animals like Laika, a dog, and Baker and Abel, two monkeys. Next. In this tale of Cold War era intrigue, Lemire and Sorrentino explore a bizarre alternate history, one where these plucky pioneers were thought lost in space, taken from us, and are now on a journey to come home. Next. Primordial is one part hard science fiction, one part historical thriller, one part mind bending ode to those who made the ultimate sacrifice to buy humans a ticket to the stars. The title is rated M for readers 18 and up and is perfect for fans of the Department of Truth and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Next. Coming back to Earth, we land in Paris by Andy Watson and Simon Gain. Juliet is paying her way through art school by painting portraits of the well-to-do. When she meets Deborah, one of her subjects, she finds a woman equally suffocated by the confines of circumstance, and the two women find that they are more than just kindred spirits. Next. Can love blossom between people from such different worlds? This classic fairy tale romance lures you in with a deceptively simple premise, the allure of new love in the city of lights, but Watson and Gain imbue their story of star-crossed lovers with new life and sensitive commentary on the expectations of class and gender. Next. Originally published by Slave Labor Graphics, Image Comics is proud to release Paris in an expanded prestige hardcover format. The title is rated M for readers 18 and up and is perfect for fans of Roman Holiday and Blue is the Warmest Color. Next. And next, thank you. Uh, moving on, we have The Passageway from the Eisner Award-winning best-selling creative team of Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino, again, <laughs> Dave Stewart, and Steve Wands. The Passageway marks the beginning of an ambitious new storytelling arc called The Bone Orchard Mythos. This shared horror universe of interconnected stories will include the release of two new titles each year for the next several years. The titles will range in format from original graphic novels like The Passageway and the upcoming Tenement to miniseries comics like uh, 10,000 Black Feathers to longer form maxi series comics. Every title in the Bone Orchard mythos will stand as its own story while also working to develop an overarching narrative of vast horrors, and it all starts here in the passageway, where readers will follow a geologist sent to a remote lighthouse to investigate a strange phenomenon. The title is rated M for readers 18 and up and is perfect for fans of Archive 81 and Jeff Vandermeer's Southern Reach trilogy. Uh, we do not currently have a preview for this, uh, but we have something ready for a uh, free comic book day. And if you would like a preview PDF, just send me an email. Next, our penultimate title is Clementine Book One from two-time Eisner Award-winning creator Tilly Walden. The fan favorite character from the popular Walking Dead game is now getting her very first original graphic novel set in Robert Kirkman's universe. Next. Walden has Clementine back on the road, aiming to grow beyond the trauma of her past and forge a life for herself by herself. When she crosses paths with another teen named Amos, however, her solitary plans change and she finds herself pushed to keep the young man's naivete from getting the best of him. Next, now she finds herself among a group of her peers trying to build somewhere safe for all of them, but as friendship, rivalry, and romance begin to grow, so do the threats that surround them. This title is rated T plus for readers 16 and up, and is perfect for fans of On a Sunbeam and The Walking Dead. Next. And thank you. Uh, our last title is Razorblades, the horror magazine year one omnibus. This deluxe hardcover anthology collects the best stories of the genre from the best authors and artists in the biz. Next. Co-created by James Tynan IV and Steve Fox, 
Razor Blades brings readers a veritable surfeit of terror from talent as diverse as Scott Snyder, Marguerite Bennett, Rom V, Alex Pachnadel, Jenna Chaw, and more. Next. From monsters under the bed to corpses in the closet, haunted houses to hatchet-wielding maniacs, this is your nonstop shop for heart-stopping, page-turning, hair-raising horror. It's rated M for readers 18 and up and is perfect for fans of the works of Junji Ito and Gideon Falls. Next. Thanks for coming, everybody, to request PDFs of any of the titles highlighted today uh, or any titles, period. Please email me at the address provided in this slide. You can also find sample content for these titles and more on Edelweiss and select first issues are available for free at imagecomics.com. Thanks, everybody, and thank you for your help with the slides, Grace. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Thank you, Chloe. Our next present, our next panelist today will be Mark Devera and Morgana Santilli. Morgana is the sales and marketing manager at Yen Press. She is a former comic shop manager and buyer and always particularly loved helping readers find their new favorite series. Other than reading manga, Morgana enjoys drinking lots of tea, snuggling with her two black cats, and collecting too many books for her toddler's personal library. Mark is the sales and marketing director of Yen Press. Mark's passions include basketball, cats, and of course, manga and graphic novels. Among the many things that Mark has done as a part of the manga and graphic novel industry, presenting great books to librarians remains one of the most satisfying parts of his job. Thanks for joining us, Morgana and Mark. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having us. How's it going, everybody? Uh, it's me, Mark from Yen Press, and I am joined by Morgana. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here. So we at Yen Press are primarily known for being premier publishers of Japanese manga. At this point, we're about 15 years old, the time in which we've published some of the most well-known manga series out there, series like Black Butler, series like Fruits Basket, Soul Eater. Uh, but nowadays, we're also gaining quickly gaining a reputation as being publishers of print editions of Korean web comics, um, just web comics in general, but more on that later. Uh, in addition to the manga and web comics, we also have an imprint, which we call JY, dedicated to middle grade books. That is where Svetlana Shamakova's Awkward, Brave, and Crush fall under. And this year is a very special year for JY because we have the highly anticipated new volume of the Barry Brook middle school series where Awkward, Brave, and Crush belong to, a series called Enemies. And who better to introduce Enemies than creator Svetlana Shamakova herself? So without further ado, we have a video from Svet talking about Enemies. Hi, Svetlana Shamakova here, your friendly neighborhood hermit author of Bear Brook middle school series. Really excited to be back with another book, uh, Enemies is about Felicity Thiel. Uh, she's a middle schooler, artist, ever in the shadow of her very accomplished baby sister, Letty Thiel. And Felicity really wants to impress her family, who are too impressed with her baby sister right now. So Felicity enters in a contest at school, and that's when her life gets extra complicated. She has to deal with lazy project partners, difficult friends, and Joseph Co who is a former friend, and now that he's not a friend, what is he? Is he an enemy? And read the book to find out in 2022. Thank you so much for your support, and happy reading. I hope you enjoy it. Take care. All right, so that's that's Enemies from Svetlana Shamakova. So, while we're here, I want to talk about enemies specifically, uh, but before then, I want to talk about Barry Brook Middle School as a whole. So for those of you who have not experienced Awkward, Brave, or Crush, who have not yet entered the world of Barry Brook Middle School, it's an absolutely adorable and endearing middle grade graphic novel series. What's, what's really fun about it, uh, other than being extremely relatable, other than having Svetlana Shamakova's a wonderful artwork, she's a master at expression, just a master comic storyteller in general, is the fun of, of experiencing these characters and waiting to find out who's gonna be the main character of the next story. You know, for example, Awkward introduced us to, to Jensen who ended up being the main character of Brave. And within Brave, we, we um, 
met the main character of, of Crush. And Enemies follows a character that we met right from the start with, with Awkward uh, in, in Felicity. So, and that's where I'll talk about what's specifically great about, about Enemies. Felicity from you know, the very first volume of Barry Brook Middle School was one of the most interesting and one of the most fun characters to, to read about. Uh, a fiery and passionate character, one who gets, you know, even you learn more about her within Brave when, you know, I don't want to go into the spoilers too much, but let's just say that one of the turning points has to do with Felicity within that volume. So needless to say, if you're going to make a top five list of characters you wanted to learn more about in Barry Brook Middle School, Felicity had to be at the top. And we're very happy to have a volume completely dedicated to Felicity uh, and the trials and tribulations she has to deal with. So at this point in time, we are scheduled to release Enemies in September of this year. Uh, you know, a, a title that's very near and dear to our hearts, one that we consider the most important of the year. So please look forward to Enemies. And once again, if you haven't experienced Awkward, Brave, and Crush, we highly encourage you to check those out too, to, to see what the big deal is about. All right, on to the next title. All right, so this is a uh, the fifth installment in our graphic novel adaptation of Cassandra Clare's The Mortal Instruments uh, series, and we've we do uh, young adult adaptations of, of you know a few series. Uh, some of you may be familiar with our adaptation of, of James Patterson's Maximum Ride, um, but Mortal Instruments is one that we've we've been doing for a while. Volume five is coming out in March of this year. Um, you may be familiar with the series starting with the City of uh, City of Bones. Um, this is adapted by uh, Cassandra Jean, who is an incredible artist. I mean, you can see from the cover here, just beautiful, um, you know, artwork depicting this kind of intricate steampunk world, um, magical fantasy series. Uh, so this is something that certainly fans of the Mortal Instruments are, are looking forward to, um, and, and in fans of YA fantasy series in general. Um, and this is, you know, another uh, YA series, 13 and up um, on this one. Next slide. Thank you. Um, next, we have Toilet Bound Hanako-kun Volume Zero. Many of you at this point are probably familiar with Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. It is one of our best-selling series right now. Um, this is a series that follows a young girl named Nene who discovers uh, a ghost haunting the girl's bathroom at her high school. Uh, and that's Hanako Kun who kind of tricks Nene into helping him solve the various mysteries, supernatural mysteries that occur around the school. This volume zero is uh, contains the kind of pilot episode, if you will, the, the story that creators Aida Iro made kind of before Hanako Kun, what became the Hanako Kun series. Um, it also has other short stories contained. Obviously, fans of Toilet Bound Hanako Kun are going to be scrambling for this. Um, we've had a lot of success with um, Toilet Bound Hanako Kun kind of spin off. We have ha had a, um, an after school Hanako Kun book that came out recently, which kind of is uh, like side stories and little gag gag stories that, that people have really enjoyed, and an art book that came out recently with Ida Ira's beautiful art. Um, so needless to say, we expect this to do very, very well. Uh, it is coming out very soon, uh, this month, I believe. Let me just double check. Yes. Sorry, I'm having a, there you go. All right, uh, next up is Spy Classroom. So what we have here with Spy Classroom is a manga adaptation of one of our, our a, a light novel that we released recently, uh, one that quickly became one of our most popular. So before I talk mm -hmm. about Spy Classroom specifically, I wanna talk about the category that it represents. Right now we're at a time where amongst the many types of anime and manga that are becoming really popular amongst fans. One interesting development are stories that are related to spies and espionage becoming very, very popular uh, recently. Uh, you know, for example, from our line, we have a manga series called Love of Kill 
that is uh, that ha was adapted into an anime airing right now. The manga has done extremely well for itself prior to the anime, and needless to say, with an anime, it's just absolutely taking off. And from our line, the series that we see following uh, similarly is Spy Classroom, especially because we've already seen success with Spy Classroom as a, a light novel. So Spy Classroom takes place in a world in which much of the battles between countries are fought with, with spies. And what we have over here is, is a man who is one of the greatest spies ever, who has to take on an impossible mission, which becomes even more impossible because helping him are extremely uh, inexperienced spies who are just really learning the ropes. So a lot of, in addition to a lot of espionage and intrigue and puzzle solving, we also have a lot of, of fun comedy and, and cute characters. So uh, I don't believe we were, were aware of whether or not an anime is going to come out for this, but uh, you know whether or not that is ever to come to be, like I said, it's already extremely popular because of the light novel that was released prior to the manga and because this category in general is just is just taking off. So yeah, definitely a manga to, to add to your collection with Spy Classroom. Next we have Cross-Dressing Villainous Cecilia Sylvie. Um, this is a manga adaptation of a light novel series, which we are also publishing. Um, this is in a genre that has become very popular uh, recently. These kind of isekai stories are stories where a character is reincarnated in another world um, as the, the main villainess. Uh, and she is usually she usually becomes aware of the fact that she is reincarnated in this world. Frequently, it is a, a video game world that she's familiar with. Um, and she knows that she's the villainess and that she is probably going to die. Um, and in this case, Cecilia has been reincarnated as the villainess of a dating simulator game. Uh, she knows that she's fated to die no matter what route uh, the, the story takes. So in order to avoid this, she decides to cross-dress as a man. Uh, it's obviously full of, full of fun and hijinks here as Cecilia tries to avoid her untimely fate. Um, we have also published other titles in this kind of genre. Most recently, uh, I'm the Villainess, so I'm Taming the Final Boss, um, but also things like The Dark History of the Reincarnated Villainess and uh, The White Cat's Revenge as plotted from the Dragon King's lap. So lots of these fun, you know, female-led stories where you have a main character who uh, is kind of starting out on the wrong foot. You know, she knows that she's she's doomed and she's got to try everything in her power to prevent that from happening. So the manga adaptation of this is coming out March 22nd. Um, this is another, you know, good teen series, 13 and up. And the, uh, the light novel is coming out this month. All right, and last but not least, we have the beginning after the end, which um, yeah, my apologies, I should have uh, left the, the date here. This one is coming out in June. And this one is one of our most highly anticipated releases of the year. As I mentioned, one of the things that we're becoming really well known for nowadays is a, a publisher of, of print editions of uh, series that have been popular on Korean webcomic platforms like like Webtoon, like, like Tapas, like Tapitoon. Last year, we released Solo Leveling, which took off quickly as one of the best-selling graphic novels of 2021 and still continues to do well to this day. And since then, a few other publishers have released series that originally debuted on these webcomic platforms, which also became some of the best-selling series of, of the year. Um, so I, I think at this point, uh, a lot of you may have carried some of these, uh, perhaps Soul Leveling, perhaps some of the other web comics that were released by our competitors. But if you haven't now, let me tell you, in a year from now, this will be a very familiar category to you all, especially if you currently have you know, um, patrons who are big fans of manga, because a lot of those manga fans are also big fans of these web comics that I speak of. Which brings us to this, the beginning after the End, a series which is the most popular webcomic on the platform Tapas, which is one of the one of the, the biggest brands in, in webcomics nowadays. You know, just to give a bit of the, the metrics over here, uh, you know, more than 13.3 million webcomic views 
uh, more than 14.4 million novel views. This was originally a novel on the platform before it became the, the extremely popular webcomic. So combined readership of around 28 million. I mean, let's just say it, it has a, a huge fan base. And it deserves it because it's such a it's such a, a fun series. One that's about uh, a king, uh, King Grey, who dies and is reincarnated as a baby named Arthur Lewin, uh, in a world filled with with magic. And in addition to learning magic, he learns compassion and purpose for the first time in his existence. But then later might have to turn back to old ways when his new home is is torn by war, and him as a leader in the world may have to resort to the way he was back when he was King Grey. And as the war progresses, he finds that him being reincarnated in this world is no mere coincidence and that there may be others like him. So for those of you who did well with solo leveling, for those of you who are doing well with, with these, these web comic titles and manga, the beginning after the end, it's needless to say, one to look out for um, coming this June. And that's it for us from, from Yen Press. So thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Hope you learned about a few great titles. Um, passing it on to the last presenter. Thank you so much, Mark and Morgana. Our final presenter today will be Margot Wood. Margot is the Director of Sales at Oni Press. Prior to joining the team in 2018, Margot worked at HarperCollins where she created and ran the young adult community Epic Reads. She is also the author of the novel Fresh. Welcome Margot, the floor is yours. Hi, I just wanted to say hi really quickly with the video on before I shut it down and start reading from my, my prepared notes that I've been scribbling all over for the last 10 minutes. All right, so let's go to the first slide here. Um, starting off with some picture books. And the first one is Tiny Fox and Great Boar, uh, which is the very first book. You can go to the next slide. So Tiny Fox and Great Boar is the story of an introverted fox who learns how to share his life and forms a deep connection with a boar. Winter comes and they learn how to overcome the hardships together. And even though they have a fight over who gets to stay under the apple tree, they realize that they don't wanna be apart. You can go to the next slide. So Tiny Fox and Great Boar can show a shy kid that amazing experiences await them if they are brave enough to explore new things. And I personally, I'm, I just really love this art style. It is so, so sweet and beautiful. And the little fox is so cute. <laughs> you can go to the next. Um, so it's a story about friendship, um, it explores the seasons, and it teaches young readers about sometimes we are forced to leave our comfort zone by external circumstances, and other times, even though it would be easier and safer to follow our own daily routine, it's worth choosing the road less traveled. You can go to the next. This is an English translation of an original Polish publication by Berenika Kolonitska, um, and it is the first in a planned series of five volumes, and the first one goes on sale March 8th. Next, we have, this is a birthday cake from the same team who brought you This is a Taco. This is out on July 12th. Next. A familiar group of friendly forest animals set out to bake a birthday cake, and in the process, they learn that history of why cakes are made as food for celebrations and companionship, as well as how messy it can be to make cakes. I'm sure we've all experienced a messy cake baking session or two. And so this is this story combines like interesting historical facts with some funny commentary, and the characters are super cute. Um, you can go to the next slide. It is aimed at readers and retailers alike, um, or young readers as well as parents. Um, it's the perfect book for all birthday celebrations and any kind of birthday display. If you're putting together any kind of books that involve birthdays, this one is the perfect one to include with that. Um, you can go to the next slide. And this is the uh, this is part of a very popular series, the This Is A series. This is the fourth one in the series that uh, teaches children about animals and other interesting topics. So we've had This Is A Taco, This Is Not A Rat, <laughs> um, This Is A Whoopee. So lots of different animals that are featured and lessons in each one, um, ages four to eight. And like I said earlier, this is out on, on July 12th. Next. Okay, so now we have some middle grade books. Um, so ages eight to 12 for the next two books in this uh, presentation. Um, ages of Slam by Dave Scheidt and Scoot McMahon is out on April 19th. Next. 
The Inches of Slam are not your average professional wrestlers. They work for the President of the United States to protect people from all kinds of threats, both on Earth and in space. And they've just been joined by their newest recruit, a 12-year-old wrestling vlogger named Katie Jones, who might just know more about wrestling than the wrestlers themselves. Um, So you can go to the next slide. Ages of Slam takes the simple and awesome concept of professional wrestling and young and a young fan and turns it up to 100. Next. It's got everything you'd want from a graphic novel. It's got superhero pro wrestlers, a world in jeopardy, heel turns, gruesome grannies, friendship, families, and of course, treacherous villains. Um, and this one is out in April and we are super excited. We have PDFs for, I think, almost every single thing I'm presenting today, except for <laughs> one title, but Uh, This one is ready to go if anybody's interested. Next, we have the Choose Your Own Adventure Journey Under the Sea by Andrew Gaska and E.L. Thomas. Next. So this is the second book in our official Choose Your Own Adventure graphic novel series. And this one comes under an... uh, (laughs) <laughs> this one comes under an underwater epic where you get to choose the destination. With your submarine vessel, The Seeker, you'll explore the ocean depths and all the mysteries, creatures, and monsters that inhabit the ocean floor. Some will be familiar. You can go to the next slide. Squids, whales, and of course, the great white shark. Others will be entirely new to your eyes, like the city of Atlantis. So as you can see on the slide, um, whenever there is yellow text boxes, those are sort of the like choose your own adventure parts. Um, You can go to the next slide. And you can see sort of like at the end, like if you pick one particular (laughs) journey, um, the story ends for you here, like on page 10. (laughs) But if you choose a different uh, option, then you would continue on and you would skip to page 101. Go to the next slide. So there are 35 different endings in this story, um, and it is not overly violent. It is very vibrant, very colorful, and it features an older teen, young adult, so around like 13 years of age, um, protagonist who is non-binary and of Pacific Islander descent. And this one is out on August 31st. I do not have a PDF for this one, but we do have... Um, The first volume in this series, they can be all read independently. They're all, you know, like regular choose your own adventure stories. Um, So if you want to sort of get a feel for what this sort, how this mechanism works in a graphic novel format, um, we have the first one, Eighth Grade Witch, which I can send you the PDF for if you want to take a look at that and get a sort of sense of what this, what these books look like. All right, next we have um, a couple books for the young adult crowd. First up is A Quick and Easy Guide to Asexuality by Molly Muldoon and Will Hernandez out on March 29th. You can go to the next slide. Too many young people grow up believing that their lack of sexual desire means that they are broken. So writer Molly Muldoon and cartoonist Will Hernandez, both in the ace community, are here to shed light on society's misconceptions of asexuality and what being ace is really like. Go to the next slide. This is both for asexual people, people questioning whether they might be ace, and anyone hoping to understand more about sexuality. Uh, Next. The age of consent is 16, so this book can be shelved in either young adult or adult sections. We leave it up to the retailer's discretion, but it is appropriate for a young adult audience. Um, Some content warnings for this one. Topics that are briefly covered may be triggering, including... um, and include harmful stereotypes and tropes and sexual violence, medical disinf- medical discrimination, depression, rejection, and invalidation. But none of these topics will be depicted or discussed to a graphic degree. Um, and this content warning is included in the very beginning of the book. What is included in this is what asexuality is, how it affects different aspects of a person's life, how it is viewed by culture and society, common misconceptions, dating and sex, representation, as well as a resource list. Um, And their author and illustrator also include their personal thoughts and experiences. What is not included in this book is a deeper analysis of the split attraction model, sexual instruction, or relationship advice. And again, all of this sort of what is included, what's not included. All of this is like on the very, very beginning of the book. So it's very clear um, what is what the readers can expect from this. And this one is out on March 29th. Next up, we have Space Trash. Um, Space Trash by Jen Woodall is out on July 5th. Next. 
So space, space trash, whew, that's hard to say <laughs> a couple times in a row. This takes place in the future in a high school on the moon because Earth is supposedly depleted of all of its resources. The students of the high school spend the majority of the series trying to get other gangs to help them to join forces to fix an old space shuttle so that they can travel back to Earth. Um, next. So this actually is the first of four volumes, um, and each volume is only around 100 pages, so they're not very long. And this first volume leads right up to the discovery of the shuttle and um, making a plan to learn how to fix it and get back to Earth. So um, it has like these anti-capitalist climate change themes. Um, and you know, they learn that they can't really trust the government because the government told them that earth was depleted, but it turns out it's not, I mean, granted, all of this is sort of revealed throughout the first four volumes, but it is a really, really cool story. And it is also an oversized hardcover. So it's about the same trim size as the T dragon society hardcover. Um, if you are familiar with that book next. I forgot to say next earlier, but there we go next. <laughs> So we are very excited about this one. It's super cool, ages 13 and up. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. Next, we have a new adult book on our list that everybody is super excited about. If this has not come up in your radar on Instagram or TikTok yet, it will soon because it has been blowing up a lot <laughs> lately. Um, Chef's Kiss by Jarrett Melendez and Danica Bryan. Next. So Ben Cook is just out of college looking for a writing job, but he's coming up short, as we all have been there right after college and can't get that first job. And after a miserable day of interviews, he spots a restaurant that's hiring and he lands the gig, but on a trial basis only. He will have to train with the other chefs in a series of challenges to prove to the head chef that he can stay on full time. Everything he cooks has to be passed, has to pass the taste test by the head chef's pet pig, Watson. Next. One of the chefs, Liam, has caught Ben's eye. Ben is torn. Should the cooking job just be temporary while he continues looking for a writing job? Or is he happy at the restaurant? Could his crush on Liam have something to do with him thinking he may give up writing and stay at the restaurant? Next. So this is wholesome new adults. It is late teens, early 20 something romance that takes place during the first year after college graduation, appealing to young adult fans as well as older new adult readers. It is, the romance is sweet and it's a little sexy every now and then, but it is not steamy at all. Um, this can also be shelved in YA if you think your um, readers will prefer it over in the YA section, but it also can, if you have a new adult section, great, if not, it can go in YA or adult. Um, while the characters are older, there is no sex on the page and there's only one kiss and a few shirtless scenes, if that helps clear things up. Um, super queer, super cute, lots of bonus content, including recipes, original art, and guest art as well. It's perfect for fans of Bloom, Check Please, Heartstopper, and Mooncakes. Next, we have the last two I've got here are adult titles. Uh, first up is Dirtbag Rapture by Chris Bella and Kendall Good out on August 2nd. You can go to the next slide. She's stoned, she's selfish, she's all that stands between us and the end of the world. <laughs> Dirtbag Rapture follows Kat Garcia, an antisocial young woman with a fondness for weed and her and ever since her heart stopped while she was partying, she can now talk to ghosts and carry them around in her head. She turns this skill into a living and charges ghosts a fee for transporting them to better locations. Next. But when Kat inadvertently plays into a global demonic plan, she finds herself at the center of the battle between good and evil. And she's really not thrilled about it because she just wants to be stoned. Next. So this one is a one and done, not part of a series. Um, so it'll be a standalone volume. It is funny. It is like endear it's like a funny endearing stoner comedy <laughs> um perfect for fans of the show ghosts and the good place it's got the same sort of general vibe as good place for sure um and i really like how the art style changes from when we're you see the ghosts in cat's head versus when you the ghosts are out when she's in the real world next we have petrograd by philip galat this is a um paperback edition of a, an original hardcover that came out a long time ago. Uh, next slide. 
So Petrograd is a tense edge of your seat spy thriller that explores the untold tale of the international conspiracy behind one of the strangest and most infamous assassinations of all time, the 1916 murder of Grigory Rasputin. Next. So they did a lot of research um, with this, you know, historical documents like this is sort of like a fictionalized version of what actually happened or what they think happened. Um, so it can be shelved in historical or historical biography, but it, it does have, you can go to the next slide. Um, it has a new introduction from a PhD from Yale, uh, Dr. David R. Stone, who's a historian of Russian literature and Russian history. And he um, really loves <laughs> Petrograd. So we have a whole new forward um, as well as cover art for this paperback edition that is out now. And next slide. And then I just wanted to very, very quickly, briefly let you all know that we have a Tea Dragon Society box set coming out um, in July, and it includes the first three hardcovers. So it's a hardcover box set um, that features new art. And we're very excited about that. And next. And then finally, we have a couple of upcoming sequels. We just want to take a quick screenshot of this. Um, Saifu Volume 2 and um, Secrets of Camp Whatever Volume 2, Witchy Volume 2. And then, of course, our ongoing Rick and Morty series. Uh, just wanted to let, remind you all that we have lots of Rick and Morty always coming from us. And next slide. And that's it for me. We are distributed, uh, Oni Press distributed, distributed whew, by Simon & Schuster. And all of our PDFs are available on Edelweiss and NetGalley. If you don't see anything up there that you want, please feel free to contact me and I will get you whatever you need. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Margo. And a big thank you to all of today's panelists for showing us these amazing graphic novels today. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past programs and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the print reading experience with the convenience of online access at bookistonline.com and lock in print, online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get booklists for only $75. Patron-friendly, librarian-approved, and free with the Booklist subscription, Booklist Reader, Booklist new digital-only magazine highlighting diverse readers' advisory recommendations for all ages, has arrived. To see and share the latest issue, visit booklistonline.com slash reader issues. And thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. One more huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors, Fantagraphics Books, Diamond Book Distributors, Image Comics, Yen Press, and Oni Press. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.